Derek walked slowly through the forest. It was here that he felt the most at ease. There were no people here, no one to mock him. The animals and the trees didn't care what he looked like. They weren't malicious or cunning, they simply followed their natural instincts. Just a few days ago, Derek had noticed the tracks of outsiders. It seemed like someone from out of town, an intruder. Nobody in the local area ventured into the forest without permission. It wasn't about those who gathered berries and mushrooms, they didn't venture this far. This was someone else. Moreover, they were not alone, that was for sure. Derek couldn't yet understand what strangers would need in the forest. The tracks led to a remote cabin, which meant someone was purposefully heading there. It was hunting season. What could it be then? Derek had two possibilities in mind. The first was poachers, and the second was someone who wanted to admire the beauty of nature. You see, about a kilometer from the cabin, there was a large cliff. Nature had whimsically split the earth there, exposing every layer of soil, almost like a picture. But besides that, something like broad, large steps had formed to the side. At the bottom, a stream had found its way, which had now turned into a fast and rather dangerous river. Five years ago, a very famous director had approached Derek, asking for a location for shooting. They needed a bubbling river and a beautiful landscape. When Derek took him there, the director was truly amazed. This is exactly what we need. Since then, the path had remained equipment was transported along it. Of course, all this could only be done on dry days and with Derek's guidance, as anyone could get lost in this forest. The path had become a landmark for those who liked to go mushroom picking further in. Derek remembered the film crew very well, especially the actors. In those days, he enjoyed watching what was happening on the shore, even with some reverence. He never thought that acting was so tough. The main character, who was supposed to die in the turbulent waters at the end of the film, was Amanda, a young and very beautiful woman. It was her beauty that made her suffer in the film's plot. All the men were drawn to her, she trusted them, but then they would leave her, thinking that someone as beautiful as her could never be faithful. Derek, holding his breath, watched her and thought that there was no one more beautiful than her in the world. And Amanda pestered him with questions every free moment. She was completely a city girl and didn't even know the names of some trees, let alone what bird had stolen her hairpin. He remembered how she had persuaded him to go fishing on the very last day of their stay here. Derek saw that one of the actors was showing an unusually strong interest in her, and the girl was willing to hide in her tent for days. He felt sorry for Amanda and tried to be there when that actor bothered her too much. The last two days of filming had gone without Amanda. All the scenes with her had already been shot. Derek was just preparing firewood for the campfire, even though he was sure that no animals would come out at night due to the presence of too many people. But the campfire made their stay here somehow more enjoyable. He stacked the last sticks into the campfire just as Amanda appeared nearby. Derek, can I ask you something? Is fishing interesting? He smirked. It's interesting to some, not so much to others. What about you? Fishing is calming. It gives you time to think. Especially when you need to make a decision. I've never been fishing in my life. But, I guess you can't fish in this river, can you? Why not? Just about two kilometers upstream, the river takes a turn, and the water widens. You can catch some pretty decent carp there. Amanda's eyes lit up. Derek, I'm begging you. No, I'm pleading with you. Let's go fishing. He looked at her in surprise. Do you really want this so badly? Yes. I'm leaving the day after tomorrow, and I probably won't get to a place like this again. Work, work, and more work. You can't imagine how much I want to learn to milk a cow, handle a scythe, and go fishing. 
Well, consider this my little adventure. Cows and sides don't suit me, but fishing. Please, don't refuse me. To be honest, he was taken aback. Going fishing with Amanda, someone he was quite fond of. Derek saw her wide open eyes and realized he couldn't refuse. All right, you've convinced me. Get ready. We'll set out in two hours. Bring warm clothes. It gets chilly by the river at night. And bring everything you have to fend off mosquitoes. Amanda squealed with delight and rushed to her tent. Derek quickly headed to his cabin to grab fishing rods and bait. If he walked at a brisk pace, he'd be back in two hours. As they were getting ready to leave, the same actor who had been bothering Amanda incessantly approached them. Amanda, where are you going? I'm going fishing. I'll be back tomorrow, Amanda replied. Are you out of your mind? You're going into the woods with a stranger? You don't know him at all. The actor was becoming increasingly agitated. Derek didn't intervene in the conversation. He waited calmly. Charlie, what the hell do you want from me? Amanda retorted. You know damn well I promised your father to look out for you. No, you imposed your watching out on me. Frankly, I find your guardianship too intrusive. Amanda, calm down. You're just overexcited. You need to relax. We'll finish filming, and I'll take you to the seaside. I'm not going to the seaside with you. You will, Amanda. And right now, I forbid you from going anywhere with this stranger. Derek smirked and then furrowed his brow. Charlie grabbed Amanda's hand and tried to pull her away, but she resisted, attempting to break free. Let go. It hurts, she exclaimed. But Charlie twisted her arm. That's when Derek stepped in. He gently intercepted the hand Charlie was using to hold Amanda and squeezed it. The young lady told you to let her go. Charlie winced in pain. Don't interfere. I'm going to marry Amanda. I don't like that she's going off with you to who knows where. Amanda managed to break free. Well, I'm not planning to marry you. Idiot. Let's go, Derek. Amanda walked purposefully in the other direction. Derek didn't like the way Charlie was looking at her, but he didn't say anything else. He caught up with Amanda and turned her in a different direction. That way, he said. Amanda smiled. They walked for about an hour. Derek could have covered the distance in 20 minutes, but Amanda kept getting distracted. First, she spotted an unfamiliar flower, then she marveled at the sky. He didn't mind, after all, what was interesting in the city. But here, just before reaching their destination, a hare suddenly darted out from under their feet and fled. Amanda screamed. He thought she was scared, but in the next moment, she was clapping her hands in delight. Amanda's childlike naivety truly surprised Derek. In two hours, they caught enough fish for fish soup, and then Derek set up the rubber bands for fishing. Amanda watched the unusual gear attentively, and he explained what each component was for. In the morning, we'll collect the fish and take it back to your group. But for now, let's make some real fish soup over the campfire. Amanda, with wide-eyed enthusiasm, looked at him. When the fish soup was ready, she took a bottle of wine from her backpack. Look what I brought. I brought it with me, but I never imagined I'd have a reason to drink it. I was almost thinking I'd have to take it back. Derek chuckled. Amanda had come prepared. Well, wine was always welcome. They ate the fish soup, which Amanda absolutely loved, washed it down with wine, and chatted. How did you end up in the woods? I mean, do you live here? Amanda asked. It's a long story, Derek replied with a wry smile. But for some reason, he really wanted to tell Amanda about it. 
Maybe it was the setting, the night, and the wine that were affecting him. I came here three years ago. Well, not for the first time. I used to live in the village, and I would come here with friends for hunting. You can't imagine how much I love this place, especially Charlie. Honestly, I wanted to stay here forever. I had a girlfriend. I was making plans. You know, I even planned our wedding. Did you work in the city? I did. You won't believe it, but I was a pediatrician. No way. Yes. And strangely enough, children weren't afraid of me. On the contrary, Amanda looked embarrassed. I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. It's just such a big change. It's okay. I didn't understand it first either. In fact, I was pretty indifferent to it. I didn't pay attention, but then. Anyway, my girlfriend, she started cheating on me. I couldn't believe it because she always said how sincerely she loved me. But then, I didn't wait. I confronted her about it. When she realized I knew everything and wouldn't forgive her, she turned into a completely different person. She started yelling as if she were possessed. It was only then that I found out why she loved me. I have an uncle who's very wealthy. I lost my parents early, and my uncle was always there for me. He's very rich. My girlfriend thought that since my uncle was single, I'd be very wealthy. Yes, I know he'll leave everything to me anyway, but I never took any money from him. He would get upset, but I didn't need the money. I wanted to live on my own. When she realized I knew the truth and wouldn't forgive her, she started yelling that I was a monster, that everyone laughed at me. That's when I realized that it was probably true. And it hurt so much. Since childhood, everyone told me that my peculiarity was not a big deal, and I used to think the same way. What's the big deal? Instead of five fingers, I have six on my hand. But when she screamed at that moment when I hugged her, it seemed to her that the hands of a monster were sliding over her body. I quit the clinic the next day, and a week later, I came here. At first, I just settled in this cabin, then fixed it up. Then I was offered to become a gamekeeper. It turns out they hadn't been able to find someone for a long time. The nickname Hunter stuck with me. Locals, I think, don't even know my real name. They just call me Hunter. It's a sad story. And what about your uncle? He's doing well. He visits me sometimes. And that girl? Do you still love her? No, definitely not. They were silent for a while, then Amanda spoke up. You know, I have a sad story too. My dad, he's a very influential person, but how should I put it, he's very cruel. My mom, she was very kind, but at one point, my dad stopped loving her. In short, he had her committed to a mental institution. Everyone thought my mom had really gone insane. But I know she was normal. She just cried a lot and was upset in recent times. Mom stayed in the hospital for only three months. And then she escaped and jumped off a bridge. My dad, for the umpteenth time, told everyone she was crazy. You see, he doesn't value me at all. For him, I'm just a regular stupid kid. And he wouldn't have let me come here if it weren't for Charlie. He had been ingratiating himself with my dad for a long time. He keeps an eye on me, reports everything to my dad. And he actually wants to marry me. But I'm sure he doesn't want me. He wants my dad's money. You know, something tells me it'll be very difficult to get rid of Charlie. And I'm afraid of him. I feel like he's up to something. Although, maybe it's all just baseless fears. Tell me, why did your dad treat your mom like that? He could have just gotten a divorce. He couldn't. The thing is, the business my dad runs now used to belong to my mom's dad. 
When he died, my dad became the owner. But according to the paperwork, my mom was entitled to inherit it, and if they got divorced, the business would have gone to my mom. They gazed at the fire. Both of them felt much lighter because they could talk about things they had never discussed with anyone. Somewhere in the distance, a lynx screamed, and Amanda, startled, moved closer to Derek. He instinctively embraced her, and he couldn't let her go anymore. The night was magical. Both of them knew they would never see each other again. It was just the magic of the night. Derek bumped his forehead painfully against a stick and stopped. He was lost in thought. How could he be so careless? It wouldn't take long for him to stumble into a pit or something. Wait. Where were the tracks? He started looking around. Strangely, Derek was sure that the tracks led right to that cabin where the movie had been filmed. But the car tracks had disappeared. He retraced his steps and suddenly understood. There had been a lot of snow in the spring. When it melted, it created streams that washed away real gullies on the road. A car simply couldn't pass here. He climbed a few branches on the nearest tree and saw the car. It looked like it had been hidden with branches. They obviously didn't want it to be seen. It didn't look like poachers. They acted boldly and swiftly. He climbed down from the tree and started examining the tracks Derek frowned. Now he clearly saw some other tracks, and it seemed that a child was the third member of this group. It looked like some crazy family wanted an extreme adventure. Well, it served them right for venturing into the deep woods with a child. Derek increased his pace. He needed to check out this family and, if possible, send them back. Right now, the wild animals were still hungry and not very friendly. It took a while for him to reach their location. The scent of smoke was in the air, and they had indeed settled at the far campsite. Apparently, someone had been here before. They weren't complete strangers. Well, that was a relief. He carefully peeked out from behind the bushes. The door to the cabin was wide open. A woman was sitting on the porch, and a girl about five years old was nearby, doing something with twigs. There was no sign of any men, but a fire was burning. Derek decided to wait. Fifteen minutes passed until the head of the family appeared. At this point, Derek had retreated further into the bushes to avoid being noticed. It was a good thing he hadn't brought his dog with him. The man looked familiar to Derek. It was Charlie. The same Charlie who had been showing an interest in Amanda. Derek's memories were certainly stirring up some emotions today. Derek shifted his gaze to the woman. She was sitting with her head down. It was immediately obvious that she was very thin and her skin looked almost translucent. After a few minutes, she raised her head, and Derek almost fell over. It was Amanda. So, they did get married after all, and they had a child together. But why did Amanda look so unhealthy? And why were they here? Derek didn't know why, but he decided to just observe and try to listen to their conversation. Everything would be much clearer in the evening. He had to wait quite a while. But finally, everything fell silent. Amanda was still sitting there, and now Charlie had joined her. Charlie, think about it. They will search for us and find us. No, Amanda, no one will find you. Just think about it. Everyone already knows you're crazy. Who knows what got into your head? Taking a child and running away like that. You won't leave us here. I will. I won't kill you if you behave quietly. Charlie, but Martha, she's innocent. Well, no one is guilty. It just happened your dad died at the right time, but he wrote the wrong will. You see, his conscience got the best of him. It was you, you did this to dad. You're not as foolish as I thought. Charlie, you'd better kill us then. 
I can't bear to watch my daughter die of hunger or at the hands of wild animals. No, dear, that's the whole point. They will find you eventually, but only when it's all over. But you need to die on your own, without my help. Charlie laughed disgustingly. Derek didn't understand. Were they rehearsing some new scene? It couldn't be that they were discussing this so calmly. Charlie, we won't wait here for death. We'll go and look for people. Funny. I know you will. First, you won't leave the cabin, so the wolves won't devour Martha. You get lost in two trees, and secondly, I'll forget to leave the map. Do you understand, dear? Amanda burst into tears. Please, let us go. You can take all of Dad's money. I won't claim anything. Ah, uh, found an idiot. Right now, you're not claiming anything, but as soon as you get a little distance, you'll start. No, I need to be sure. The longer Derek listened to their conversation, the more he realized that this was all serious. Amanda was waiting for death, and so was her daughter. And this monster was planning it all cold-bloodedly. No, he wouldn't let this happen. What nonsense. He was about to leave, but what he heard made him freeze again. Amanda, you should be happy. You'll die next to your beloved. You've been thinking about him all this time. Although, why am I surprised? Your daughter is just as ugly as he is. You should be grateful to me for living with you for so many years. Derek understood that they were talking about him. But why did they call the daughter ugly? It made no sense. In any case, he decided to wait. If Charlie was planning to leave them here, he would just wait and then take them out of here. He would figure out the rest later. Derek quietly removed his backpack, unstrapped his ammo pouch, and gently placed them on the ground. He would retrieve them later. There was some movement near the house, and he peeked out again. Charlie pressed something to Amanda's arm, presumably giving her an injection. What was going on? He saw the woman go limp, and Charlie took the girl by the hand and walked toward the cliff. Amanda got up and followed like a ghost. Derek couldn't understand. He cautiously followed them. Charlie stopped at the edge of the cliff, handed the girl's hand to Amanda, and stepped back. Derek didn't understand what he was doing. Then he saw Charlie pull out his phone, apparently planning to record everything. Amanda, why are you hesitating? Go. Charlie urged. Amanda took a step forward. Derek froze. Charlie must have injected her with something that left her disoriented. The girl started crying and tried to pull her hand away, but Amanda didn't let go. Charlie continued to film everything with a smile. He had planned everything down to the smallest detail. Everything. He would say they were stargazing, and then Amanda did something irreversible. Apparently, she had another episode. He had suffered so much, treated her so much, and still failed. Who could have predicted that she would just casually jump off a cliff while taking a walk? Below was a deep river, and the current was so strong it would carry them away in a minute. Amanda took another step, and Derek, like an animal, lunged forward, knocking her to the ground, holding her down. She stared at him with empty eyes, and then some thought flickered in her gaze. Hunter. Amanda whispered. She must have been too weak to speak loudly. Hunter, help us. At that moment, Derek heard a screech. He jumped up and rushed toward Charlie, but he was too late. Charlie had picked up the girl and thrown her off the cliff into the river. Martha's scream echoed through the forest and then went silent. Derek rushed to the edge and jumped. The current was so strong that he couldn't stay in one place. He calculated and made several jumps and strokes with the current. Before he dived, he saw Charlie and Amanda struggling on the shore, but he couldn't reach them. 
Derek finally reached the girl on his second attempt. She was unconscious. Derek swam to the shore, performing CPR. The girl showed no signs of life, and in desperation, he stopped. Then he noticed the girl's hands, she had six fingers, just like him. All of Charlie's words had now come together, before him was his daughter. Derek rushed to her, turned her over, and started shaking her. Martha, please, stay alive. The girl suddenly coughed, attempted to breathe, and coughed again. Come on, sweetheart, come on. He held her, hugged her, stroked her back. Come on, little one. After 15 minutes, it became clear that the worst was over. He had succeeded. He had saved her. But as for Amanda, he slowly made his way up, and as soon as he stepped onto the clearing, he immediately saw Amanda. She was lying right on the edge of the cliff, and there was no sign of Charlie anywhere. He placed the girl next to her mother. Amanda, Amanda. The woman opened her eyes. Martha. Mommy. Amanda sat up suddenly and hugged her daughter tightly. My dear, my dear. I thought I would never see you again. Where's Charlie? She looked toward the cliff and smiled. Over there? Derek stood up, glanced over the cliff. No one. The river was turbulent. The sun was setting. He wouldn't be able to make it back to his cabin with both of them before nightfall. Amanda was still weak, and Martha hadn't fully recovered. All right, girls. Today we'll stay here. You can't run yet. You need to regain your strength. I'll go find some meat. He escorted the girls to the house and settled them on makeshift beds. Did he even bring any food with him? Amanda shook her head. Just for a little while, okay? Derek left, determined to find food for them. I'll be very quick, I promise. In the evening, when the sun was almost down, Derek was already roasting two ducks over the campfire. He rubbed them with the salt that was always stocked in the cabin. He found some wild mushrooms and wild onions. The girls sat together, huddled close. Suddenly, Martha asked, Mommy, will there be no more daddies? No, sweetie, there won't be. Mom, it's not nice to say this, but I'm really glad. Derek looked closely at the girl. Now he could see that she resembled him a lot. Amanda hugged her and said, Martha, you're almost five now, soon to be six, you're getting so grown up. Charlie is not your daddy, your daddy. She looked at Derek, who was waiting for her words, practically holding his breath. Your daddy is here. His name is Derek. He, he's a hunter. My daddy? The girl looked at him in surprise, then at her mom. But why? Why isn't he with us? Amanda sighed. It's all so complicated, Martha. I can't even answer that question myself. When you grow up, I'll explain everything to you, I promise. The meat is ready. Derek smiled. They would figure everything out, but not now. For now, they needed to feed his women. He surprised himself with that thought his women. The fear was gradually fading. Martha was chewing the meat and saying she had never eaten anything so delicious. While Amanda and Derek drank herbal tea, the girl circled around him. Are these real bullets? She pointed to the ammo pouch. He smiled. Real ones. Do you want to see? Very much. Amanda immediately asked, Is that safe? Derek looked at her, and she seemed embarrassed. Come here, he motioned for Martha to sit on his lap. Look here. See? Pockets. In each of them. 
Amanda watched Derek explain to the girl about bullets, pockets, and wondered why she hadn't found him earlier. Or rather, why hadn't she come sooner? Did she think he didn't need her? Well, she didn't seem to be needed by anyone, not her father or Charlie. She could have tried, and then, quite possibly, none of this horror would have happened. After all, she almost lost Martha. Martha fell asleep quickly on his lap, and he draped his jacket over her. Derek sat there, trying not to move, and he couldn't quite understand what he was feeling at this moment. Some sort of tightness, tenderness, pity? Derek, a very mature, unsocial, and stern man, suddenly had the overwhelming urge to cry, bury his face in Martha's tousled hair. You know, I thought we'd never meet again. Why didn't you tell me you were pregnant? That you had a child? When we left here, Charlie told my father that I had contacted you. He convinced my father that something was wrong with my head. I don't know why my father believed him. Maybe because he never really loved me. He knew my mother was normal. In any case, I was quickly married off to Charlie, and they locked me up at home. I tried to escape several times, but they always caught me. Everything was done cleverly. They convinced me that if I misbehaved, they'd send me to a mental hospital. And Martha would be taken away, never to be seen by me again. Because of Martha having six fingers, she was also forbidden to leave the house. And then my father died, and Charlie decided he should inherit all of his estate. I was in his way because to prove my insanity, he would need to send me for an independent evaluation. He was afraid that everything would come to light there. He injected something into me. I understood everything, but I did everything he told me to. And that's the end of that story. Yeah, fun times. And I thought you were actors. Well, yes. We met in the theater. Charlie was a complete failure, and that role was his only one. The film with the soundtrack failed, even though much was expected of it. In any case, Charlie stopped getting any acting offers after that. It turns out he had paid the director for the role, borrowing money from my father. Amanda looked at Derek. What do we do now? After all, I killed him. Calm down, everything will be fine. Especially since I saw him stumble on his own. You? Amanda looked at him in disbelief, then smiled. Derek, you were sent to me by God, and this is the second time. Go and rest. We have a long journey tomorrow. The road is tough, and you have no strength left. What? After such a dinner? I can run a hundred kilometers. They walked for almost a day. The sun was setting when a huge dog bounded toward them, barking loudly. Martha screamed and Derek immediately picked her up. In fact, she spent most of the journey perched on his shoulders. Don't be scared, this is Rex. The dog jumped around, barking and wagging its tail. Calm down, Rex. You're acting as if you were completely uncivilized. He's civilized, but you could have left a note about where you were going for a few days. At your age, you know. A tall man emerged from the bushes. He smiled, but as soon as he saw Derek wasn't alone, he became serious. Derek, where did you find these lovely ladies? Hello, uncle. Oh, did I forget to say hello? Oh, the old age. Amanda couldn't help but smile. Uncle Sasha immediately extended his hand to her. Allow me to help you with the last few meters to the palace of this bear. Amanda rested her hand on his elbow. In reality, she was on her last legs. She was trying to hide it from Derek because he had carried Martha the entire way. The girl even managed to fall asleep. She was leaning on Uncle Derek now, but to be honest, she didn't care about appearances. The main thing was not to lose consciousness. 
They reached the large, dry clearing in just 15 minutes. Uncle immediately settled Amanda in a rocking chair on the terrace. The woman fell asleep right away. Uncle Sasha watched her closely. I don't understand. It feels like she's taken some prohibited substances. That's right, Uncle. Let's set the table first, and then I'll tell you everything. Martha was petting Rex. He's so beautiful, so good. Are you a good boy? Rex attempted to lick her nose, and Martha giggled, dodging his playful attempts. At one point, she put her hand on the dog's back, which caused Uncle to raise an eyebrow in surprise. Derek, for the first time in my life, I can't find an explanation for what's happening. Derek smiled. You're right. As always, you're right. Martha is my daughter. Uncle quietly sat down. And you kept silent? You always knew you were like a son to me. You knew I had no one but you. Uncle, please stop. I only found out everything yesterday when I pulled her out of the water unconscious. That's when it all became clear to me. You can't imagine how scared I was that she wouldn't wake up. While they were setting the table on the terrace, Amanda woke up. I'm sorry, I must have dozed off without realizing it. Uncle Sasha approached her. He looked into her eyes, checked her pulse, and asked her to stick out her tongue. How long have you? He was searching for words to ask how long she had been using whatever had affected her like this. Derek understood before Amanda and answered for her. Uncle, she wasn't alone. In any case, sit down. We'll tell you everything now and figure it out ourselves. Maybe you can advise us on what to do next. Two hours later, when the well-fed girls were already asleep, the two of them sat outside, sipping beer. Nephew, any detective would envy this. It's unbelievable. Why don't you advise me on what to do correctly? You know our police. They'll need a hefty bribe. I think even more than I can afford. Nonsense. There are honest policemen in the world. You know better than anyone, I've steered clear of these matters for a long time. Here's what you should do, go to sleep. I'll make a call to someone I know and get some advice. I'll tell you everything in the morning. Derek couldn't go back to sleep. He had already awakened, but everyone else was still asleep. He sensed trouble. He quietly nudged Uncle and gestured toward the street. They went outside, and the noise of approaching vehicles grew louder. It was strange. Whenever people came for hunting, they always gave advance notice. This was an uninvited guest. Derek gently woke Uncle and indicated the approaching vehicles. They went outside, and the noise grew louder. Soon, a police car and a black SUV came into view. Oh, who's coming here? Maybe it's yours? Uncle chuckled. No, the department has slightly different vehicles. I'll give him a call just in case. As soon as the vehicle stopped, Charlie got out of the SUV. He was pretty battered, limping, his face scratched up, but alive. Derek spat on the ground. I knew guys like you don't drown so easily. There you go. Did you hear that? Everyone heard it. He regrets not finishing me off. Three armed men and the local police officer had already exited the police car. The officer looked apologetically at Derek. I don't understand what's happening. Nobody even bothered to listen to me. They just ordered me to escort him here. One of the policemen approached Derek. You're under arrest. Attempted murder of Charlie Zappala and unlawfully detaining his wife and child at your place. Derek glanced at Charlie. You know, I don't think things will go as planned for you. Uncle Sasha joined them. Who's the senior officer here? The police officer standing next to Derek responded. 
I am. What's the matter? Take this phone then. The man listened for a long time, responded, and then returned the phone to uncle. We wait. Charlie became nervous. What are we waiting for? Arrest him and let's go. I'll take my wife and daughter. I said we wait. Charlie turned pale. All right, you wait here, and I'll take my wife and daughter and leave. She's sick. She needs her medication. He headed for the door of the house, but Derek stepped in front of him. You won't even get close to them. Charlie recoiled. You see, he's obstructing me. The police officer turned to him. We're all waiting. Nobody is going anywhere. Soon, Amanda and Marta appeared in the doorway. When the little girl saw Charlie, she screamed and ran to Derek. He picked her up in his arms, and Amanda stood behind him. Derek, what's going on? Well, Charlie decided to have me arrested for attempted murder and finally get rid of you. Lies. She's sick. She needs treatment in a specialized clinic. They're already waiting for us there. About an hour later, the noise of the approaching vehicles changed. They sounded heavier and larger. Within a couple of minutes, two black vans pulled into the large yard and people wearing masks jumped out. The police officers immediately placed their weapons in front of them. The senior officer approached Charlie. You're under arrest for the murder of your father-in-law. Amanda screamed, but Derek squeezed her hand. Charlie was taken away in the van. The senior officer approached. You've really stirred things up, Mr. Smith. He left quite a trail behind him. I dug up a bit overnight, and I think there's a lot more to uncover. Anyway, we're off. You owe us a sauna. I'll come by in a week. Six months passed. Derek was shoveling snow. We got so much snow yesterday that I had to shovel all day. My uncle called, said to fire up the sauna. Derek knew that two days ago there had been a trial. He knew that Amanda had regained all her rights and all the false medical reports had been lifted. His uncle said that the process had become quite a sensation. The whole town was in an uproar and many heads had rolled. Well, that was good. Now Amanda could live in peace, raising their daughter. When she was leaving, he said to her, Amanda, have the operation done for Marta. We don't want her to be teased all her life. I went through it myself. All right, I'll get it done. Do you want to come with us? He remained silent for a while, then spoke. No, Amanda, my world is here. Remember that. Know that you're always welcome here. They left. Before getting into the car... Marta rushed into his arms. Daddy, are we not going to see you anymore? We'll definitely see each other, I promise. When the car disappeared, Derek wiped away his tears. He had never cried, not even as a child. He heard the sound of his uncle's car in the distance, opened the gate, and continued clearing the yard. The car pulled into the yard, and Derek turned to his uncle, who had just stepped out of the car. Well, uncle, you came just in time. There's snow everywhere, and most importantly, there's a spare shovel. His uncle chuckled. You can clear it yourself. He circled the car and opened the door. Suddenly, Rex leaped out of the car, barking and wagging his tail. Derek felt a tightness in his chest, and the shovel suddenly felt so heavy. Rex separated from the car and rushed towards Derek, barking and laughing. Derek barely had time to spread his arms when Marta and Rex both pounced on him. Marta clung to his neck, squeezing as if she never wanted to let go. Finally, he opened his eyes, and Amanda stood before him. Hi, we came to you. Won't you turn us away? Turn you away, what was she talking about? 
Derek lifted Amanda with his other arm and twirled around the yard with all of them. Then, the whole group tumbled into the snow together. I'll never let you go again. Never. Rex barked loudly, confirming his words.